Get fools out of kid, don't play. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Pass Math with Miss Passarella. I'm Miss Passarella, and I'm so happy to see you. Today, we're going to talk about literal equations, and literal equations are literally just an equation with two different variables in it. For example, x and y, or a and b. Um, but today, we're going to talk about literal equations that have two of the same variable in it, and we're going to have to factor it out. So let's see if you're up for the challenge. I'm going to go over four examples with you today. The first one where the common variables on the same side. Example two, they're on the opposite side. Example three has parentheses, and example four is dealing with fractions. So let's get started with example one. You're going to see example one. Um, there's obviously more than one variable. I also see that there's a, the same variable of x, and they are on the same side of the equation. So the very first thing I like to do is draw my ladder just to stay organized so I could balance out my equation. I also see that I need to solve for x because that's what the direction said. So what I'm going to do now is factor using the distributive property. Again, the x's are already on the same side. So I'm going to make this look like the distributive property but backwards. I like to call it undistributing even though that's not technically a word. It's actually factor. So I'm going to factor out the x first and then when I divide both terms by x, so mx divided by x, I'm left with m. I keep the plus in the middle and then nx divided by x, I'm just left with n and that equals p because I didn't use the right hand side of the equation. Now I want x all by itself and x is being multiplied by whatever's in the parentheses. So I'm going to actually do the opposite and I'm going to divide. So I'm going to do it to one side, divide by whatever's in the parentheses, and then I'm going to do it to the other. And I'm going to divide again by whatever's in the parentheses. So on the left-hand side of the equation, those, whatever's in the parentheses, it cancels out. So I get rid of it. I'm left with x equals and then I'm left with whatever's on the right-hand side. Nothing simplifies here. So P is my numerator, and then M plus N is my denominator. And that's pretty much it for the first example. Pretty easy. Um, now I'm going to move on to the second example. And the second example is a little bit more rigorous. And the reason it's a little bit more difficult is because I do see that I have to get X alone, because that's what the direction said. However, one of them one of the x's is on the left hand side and the other x is on the right hand side. So the very first thing I want to do is get the x's on the same side and I'm going to do that by rearranging. I don't have to show all those inverse properties. Well, multiplicative inverse, yes, but not the additive inverse. I don't have to show that. So I'm going to go through each term and I'm going to say keep it or move it. So I'm going to choose the left hand side of my equation is the side where I'm going to keep the x. So the 3x term stays because that's the side I want my variables on. And now the xz from the right hand side, it's positive. So that means once I move it over to the left hand side, it's negative. So I'm going to do negative xz here. And now I want that 2y away from x so I could get x alone. So if 2y is minus on the right, it's plus on the left and then I keep the plus 5 where it is. So that's called rearranging. So again, I don't have to show all those inverse properties. Now this example looks just like example 1 and I can go ahead and factor out that x by using the distributive property. So 3x divided by x, I'm left with 3, keep the minus where it is. xz divided by x is just z. And now I'm left with the 2y plus 5 on the right. And now I can just go ahead and do the same thing I did for example 1. It's x times whatever's in the parentheses, and the inverse of that is to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by whatever's in the parentheses, do it to one side, and do it to the other. It cancels out on the left-hand side, and then I'm just left with x, and then I'm left with whatever was left over from the other side. So it was 2y plus 5 all over 3 minus z. And again, nothing simplifies here. So I'm done. 
All right, remember the goal for this is to have the variable you're trying to isolate all on one side of the equal sign. And um, that's not true for example three. I can see that there's an X on the left-hand side and there's an X on the right-hand side. However, this one's a little bit trickier because one of those X's is inside parentheses. So the very first thing I'm gonna have to do here is distribute because the X is inside parentheses. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the first line so I get negative 2x, and I'm going to stop you right now because there's a common error that's about to happen. Well, I'm not going to make the error, but I'm going to tell you about it. So negative 2 is outside the parentheses, and there's a minus sign inside the parentheses. So when you distribute, that just becomes a plus. Don't, you don't have to write plus negative. I don't like that because it confuses people. So just you could kind of think of it as a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive or a plus. So 2 times 5 is 10, bring the W with it, equals 3x. Um, I can now see that my variables are on opposite sides still. So what I'm going to need to do is choose which side I'm going to have the variables on. And I'm going to choose the right this time only because the 3x is already positive and I want to keep my variable positive. It's just easier to work that way. So 3x is going to stay on the right. And I want to move that 2x. So it's negative on the left. That means it's positive on the right. And then the 10w stays exactly where it is. Now this one's a little bit different because I don't have to factor anything out. The reason is, is because 3x and 2x are like terms. So I can just go ahead and combine them. So I'm going to use 10w on the left. And then 3x plus 2x is 5x. I'm one more step away from getting x alone. I'm just going to go ahead and divide both sides by 5 since right now it's being multiplied. So do it to one side and do it to the other. I'm left with x equals, because those 5's cancel, 10 divided by 5 is 2 and keep the w with it. And that one is all set. All right. For this last question that I'm going to do, it's kind of tricky for two reasons. Number one, it's a fraction, which I hate dealing with fractions. And I'm a math teacher, so I can't imagine how much you hate dealing with fractions. The second reason it's tricky is because I told you the first few questions, your goal is to get the variable you're trying to solve for on the same side. So for example, there's two x's. Right now, they're both on the right-hand side, except for this one, you have to treat it a little bit differently. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the fraction. And to get rid of the fraction, I'm going to actually make the left-hand side into a fraction. I know that sounds kind of funny. I'm going to put g over 1 equals x minus c all over x. Um, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, you're going to see that it gets rid of the fractions. So I'm going to first do g times x, which is gx. And if I started from the top left, I would end on the left-hand side. So now on this side, I'm starting with the top right, so I'm going to end this on the right-hand side. And x minus c times 1 is 1 times x minus c. So now I got rid of my fraction. Um, however, I do notice that x is inside the parentheses, which is kind of like example 3, and also the variables that I'm trying to solve for are on different sides. So it does get a little tricky. So I'm going to first bring down the gx. On the right-hand side, I technically am going to distribute, but I can just drop the parentheses since it's times 1, x minus c. Both of the variables, again, they're on opposite sides, and I want them on the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to stay on the right-hand side. Um, x is already here. Um, I want to move the c from the right-hand side away from x to the left. Now, again, it's minus on the right, so it's plus on the left. And now I'm going to move the gx from the left-hand side. It's plus or positive. That means on the right-hand side, it's going to be negative or minus. So I'm going to say minus gx. So now I got uh, both of the x's on the right-hand side, and now I can go ahead and factor those out. So I'm going to extend my ladder. I'm left with c on this side, and I'm going to factor using the distributive property. I'm going to pull out an x, 
and I'm left with x divided by x is technically 1. You can't put 0 there like it cancels or something. You have to make sure there's a place for it, which is 1. So it's 1 minus, and g divided by x is left with g. So right now, so far, so good. I got all the x's together, and now I want to get everything away from it. So x times everything in the parentheses. Um, the opposite of that is to divide. So I'm going to go ahead and say divided by the parentheses. Do it to one side. Do it to the other. This cancels out. I'm left with x equals everything that you see here. c all over 1 minus g. There is my answer in terms of x, and we are all done. I hope you guys liked my video. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. Um, I hope to see you again soon. Don't play. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves.